everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and purple is my favorite color in the entire world. Today, we are gonna take a shallow dive into all of the purple acid dyes in my collection across three brands, Dharma, Jacquard, and Greener Shades. I have 15 colors that I would classify in a purple or purplish category from Dharma, four colors from Jacquard, and then one color from Greener Shades. Now, I absolutely could have pulled in some more blue shades that lean in onto the almost purple side. And similar, there are some more pink shades that are sort of a very pinkish purple that I could have pulled in. But I tried to go for the ones that are the most purple. The reason why I call this a shallow dive is that today we are going to do some crude swatching of the dry powders low immersion to get a feel of the relative hue comparison. This is not the best comparison of the relative color intensities because I'm not measuring out the dye and comparing them at say a 1% depth of shade. But since a lot of times I like to speckle or use dry powder directly in my dyeing projects, I find that this kind of comparison is really really helpful, especially if I want to make sure I'm picking two purples that feel very different in their powder forms for whatever it is I'm going to dye. There are a lot of acid dyes in my collection that are true purples, but then also there's probably two in here that may be a tiny bit surprising, and those are Twilight Gray and Espresso Bean. Espresso Bean is a brownish purple. Um, it does really look pretty purple to me. And then Twilight Gray, uh, I would always expect to be bluer, but it does have some really beautiful purple notes to it. So I wanted to include those with the rest. There are probably some other colors that I have not pulled that do lean a little bit purple. Uh, but I am really excited to see where this goes and how this turns out. Now, of all these colors, two of them I have never tried at all before, Amethyst and Royal Purple. Uh, this video was actually delayed a little bit because I was waiting for these two colors to arrive, but I have them in my possession now, and we're gonna go and swatch all of these. But since we have 20 colors here, I need to divide this so we can easily have things in a pan. And I think where I'm going to divide things is right here. Uh, so we'll have 12 in one pan and nine in the other. I've grouped them into our pastels and bluer purples. And then we've got some of our more pinky purples and browner type hues grouped together over here. Since we are using dry dye powders, I will be wearing my respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves throughout the entire dyeing process, which means my voice will be a bit more muffled. Also, since these are commercial dyes, all of the tools and equipment that I am using are dedicated for dyeing yarn and are never used for food. I pre-soaked 200 grams of Nitpix Bare Swish DK for about an hour or so in just some plain tap water at room temperature. This yarn is 100% superwash merino and takes up color really, really beautifully. I think we're gonna start the dyeing cold. Some colors do shift their hues as they warm up. Uh, so we will also take a look at the yarn once we've started heating it. But this means that I can use multiple spoons without anything, uh, without worrying about anything melting. To our pan, I'm gonna add four cups of tap water and one tablespoon of white vinegar. Uh, these are acid dyes, so you do need some acid for them to set properly. Now, we aren't attempting to speckle here. Uh, we might see some speckles and some breaking, but the goal is really to get a crude look at how these colors relate to one another uh, once you get them wet. I think that if we wanted a more concrete example of which of these purples break, and by breaking I mean separate into multiple pigments, uh, doing it hot would be a really nice way to do that. But uh, a lot of these colors do have multiple hues because these purples have a combination of various pink and red and blue pigments in them. So for a lot of them, if you were to speckle, you would see uh, a lot of different colors in your pan. All right, we are gonna start 
with our bluer purples. First up is Royal Purple, which is one of the new to me colors. I'm taking a little bit of powder and ooh, this is very, very reddish. Oh my goodness. Oh, this is Amethyst. <laughs> I was like, I was not expecting this color. I, I haven't glued. So I like to take one of the Dharma Trading Company uh, swatch posters and tape these to the lids, which I haven't done yet for these two colors. So never mind. We're going to start with the reddish purples, and this is Amethyst <laughs> from Dharma. That was really, really confusing for me. <laughs> okay, but since we've done Amethyst, that's Dharma am Amethyst. Let's look at uh, the greener shades Amethyst purple. And it looks like I got a little bit of the Dharma Amethyst everywhere. Um, so we'll just keep that in mind. But this is the greener shades Amethyst, which is a deeper purple. Uh, and does seem to be a bit less pigmented, but it might over time pop a little more. Okay, let's do some Berry Crush, which is definitely more pink, um, but it is a purplish pink. So ironically, the Amethyst Purple is very, very red. Um, I would almost say Berry Crush is more purple than the Amethyst, but we'll see if that shifts when we heat it. Okay, and this is some Plum Dandy, which I did not bring in very much. The spoon is wet, but I can come in the reverse side of the spoon and get some more. So the Plum Dandy is definitely, definitely not as bright as what we see on the swatch. At least right now, it is a deeper purple. Okay, let's do some with the green next to the greener shades purple. This is some Derma Espresso Bean. which is definitely a dustier purple than this amethyst. The amethyst is actually a lot bluer than what I had expected. And then on this other side, let's use some of this aubergine, whoop, or eggplant. which is definitely, I'm gonna switch sides with my knife, uh, is a much, much deeper, it's also on the bluer end of things, uh, but it is a deep, deep purple. Okay, next up is Antique Mauve. And so I will say that I know that the Greener Shades Purple does break. Uh, I have speckled with it before, so. I do know that it does that. Okay. So Antique Mauve is also sort of pinkish. It is definitely a redder purple. And then Twilight Gray, which always surprises me how purple it is. Uh, it definitely has some gray notes, uh, but I mean, seeing that color and comparing it to our swatch uh, is always wild. Now granted, Twilight Gray, some of these colors will potentially shift when we add the liquid. And then finally, for our pinker purple colors, coming in with Purple Pop. Now this color is not a deep color. It <laughs> but it is very pink and I just used a fair amount. This color breaks with abandon uh, and you can see like as I'm tapping out, it gets pinker and pinker. It is an extremely fun color, but a little bit 
goes a long way and it is notorious, notorious for bleeding everywhere. In summary, in our pink or purple with deep colors, we have Dharma Purple Pop, Dharma Aubergine slash Eggplant, Greener Shades Amethyst, Dharma Espresso Bean, Dharma Twilight Gray, Dharma Antique Mauve, I guess the rest are all Dharma, <laughs> Berry Crush, Dharma Amethyst, and then Dharma Plum Dandy. Uh, and so this is something that is super helpful because if I wanted to play with the dry powders and move the dye out, sort of painting with the powders, I wouldn't necessarily use eggplant, the greener shades amethyst, and espresso bean because those are all, even though they're different colors, this is more red than espresso bean, and this is more pink than both, even though they're different colors with different hues, they absolutely, absolutely uh, would read pretty similar. Whereas, you know, if we bring in the Berry Crush, that is a lot more purple. I'm not sure how well you can see, but in the Twilight Gray, you can see the different blue and red speckles. This is a color that I have a deep dive coming up. With the Greener Shades Amethyst, I see blue and red speckles around there. As I mentioned, I have speckled this before and I did note that previously. Now I am going to set this aside carefully. Some things will move around a little bit, but we can bring over the first pan we set up and now do those bluer purple shades for real. This time for real, we're gonna look at the bluer purple, starting with royal purple, which I have never used. Don't want that much. So I'm expecting, ooh. Yeah, this is quite purple. Why did I not have this color already? This is a very nice purple. I am using brand new spoons for each color. Okay, so that is royal purple from Dharma. And I want to directly compare this to purple from Jacquard. So, and again, the size of the swatch doesn't matter because it's fairly random. I would say right off the bat, purple from Jacquard definitely breaks with speckling. I think royal purple does as well. Uh, this feels overall maybe a little bit, uh, actually I don't know if it's pinker or bluer, it sort of breaks a little bit. Okay, and now here is Dharma Deep Purple which is a color that with either heat or acid does shift. Okay, so right now, it, I find that like the stock solution of deep purple will look brown and then it shifts. I think it'll be more purple once this heats up. Because I do find it to be more blue than what I see right there. Next up, we have Dharma um, Electric Violet which is absolutely a favorite of mine. It is a beautiful bright purple and still very much feels like a true purple. Here's Jacquard Violet, which I think may be the first acid dye that I ever used ever. And it is a very blue uh, purple. In fact, you know, compared with these purples, you might be like, wait, that looks extraordinarily blue. Uh, so, yeah, when I tried it at first, I was uh, surprised. <laughs> sort of to continue, we've got some specs moving around, but to continue with these comparisons, let's use Jacquard Lilac. Yeah, so to me, the Jacquard Lilac feels, um, it's not quite like the electric violet or anything, but it feels more purple. The Lilac is more purple than the violet from Jacquard. OK, 
Okay, here is some Derma Lilac, which is also a color I have not used very often. Ooh. And this is a lot pinker. It could shift when we go ahead and add heat, but just because they have the same name doesn't mean they're gonna look the same. Talking about blue purples, let's get some intense iris from Dharma. And fun fact, just like purple is my favorite color, irises are my favorite flower. And this color, uh, it definitely can be more purple, but see how like blue it is. This may shift with heat as well, along with some of these other colors. But it is a color I really, really like. Next up is Jacquard Periwinkle. Ooh, which definitely breaks uh, in this area right here. Ooh, this is so pretty. I see a lot of very blue and purples just from pressing down. I think that that's something that you could take advantage of in a really, really fun way. We have Derma Hyacinth, which I've used a lot. And this, as I'm tapping it out, I'm seeing very, very little color right here. I have imagined like there's some colors like, ooh, that had a bright blue speckle. There's some colors that with heat really bloom, uh, but that was hyacinth, which actually feels fairly pastel. And then delphinium blue, which I absolutely know breaks really beautifully, whether you're talking about the Wilton's food coloring color or the acid dye. Um, and I think that some of the more blues may show up a bit better once it's warm because it's looking quite pink right here. Uh, that might just be, okay, I'm seeing some more of the blues come in. It's like blue and pinkish down there. So to review, starting with our Dharma acid dyes, we've got Dharma Intense Iris, Lilac, Electric Violet, Royal Purple, Deep Purple, which is definitely like turned more blue as we've been sitting here. Then we have uh, Delphinium Blue, which is very, very broken. Uh, I'll zoom in in a moment. And Hyacinth, which also has become more pigmented as we've been sitting here. Uh, from Jacquard, we have Periwinkle, Purple, Violet, and Lilac. The four Jacquard colors are really, really distinct. I think that the Lilac and Violet both are on the blue side. Purple is a more red purple. And then lilac is a very bright purple. When it's concentrated, at a 1% depth of shade, it might be more pastel. <laughs> oh, the funium blue is breaking. You can see those pinks and blues. It makes it a fun color. Uh, a lot of these, when hot, may break. But the ones that show it when cold, those are a little more obvious. But again, when we consider things with similar names, like whether it's purple or violet or lilac, you can see that different brands have different colors and that is just the way that it is. And uh, I think that there are a lot of very distinct hues here in this pan. I think that the Jacquard Periwinkle and Hyacinth feel very similar to me. Jacquard's purple feels like it could be pretty similar to Dharma's deep purple. And Jacquard's violet feels a lot like Dharma's iris, at least in this crude uh, swatching setup. Bringing the two pans together, hmm, uh, where I have the zip ties both down here for both ends, I would say that uh, Dharma's lilac, at least right here, feels a little bit, it's, it's not quite plum dandy, um, but it feels a little bit related. And espresso bean 
eh, espresso bean is definitely more muted than our deep purple. Um, but right now our twilight gray does look very similar in powder form to the deep purple. Now, if I were to dye 100 grams of yarn at a 1% depth of shade, which is one gram of dye per 100 grams of yarn, those colors would not be <laughs> anywhere near the same. Um, but it, this is important though, because if I'm using dry powders and want colors that feel distinct using this kind of technique that I really enjoy doing, I may not want to pull those two together, even though the little paint swatches for those colors look very different. And so that's a reason why I enjoy playing with this exercise. Uh, I would say our two winners for the most easy breaking are Dharma uh, Delphinium Blue and Purple Pop. Jacquard Purple and Greener Shades Amethyst Purple do feel very similar as well. Uh, and the Eggplant and Deep Purple from Dharma are very related. I, I would say that the Deep Purple is more red and the Eggplant is more blue would be my uh, quick comparison of the two colors. We will take a look at all of these colors again as they've started to heat up. But I really hope that this sort of very crude approach to swatching these purples and comparing them to one another is really helpful for when you may want to pick which color you want to use. Because as fun as it is to use these little paint swatches to help put together a palette, sometimes the colors in the pan behave differently than the color you might see on these swatches, which I think are 1% of the shade on silk. Uh, but those swatches do help to sort of, I feel like we divided them into two categories in a very, very fair way. Uh, so I'm gonna go start heating these up and we'll check in on them after they've heated for about 15 minutes. I want to take this opportunity to give a huge thank you to all of my Chemnitz patrons. And I also want to give a huge shout out to Stacy Pace, Don Jans, Karen Siegel, Jessica Parco, and the rest of these fiber patrons whose names you see on the screen right now. Patreon is a really wonderful platform where fans can support content creators. And among the perks that I offer to Chemnitz patrons are early access to the Die Pop PS series, behind the scenes sneak peeks, permanent Etsy shop coupons, and more. You can find more details at the Chemnitz Patreon, which you can find linked down below in the video description with a lot of other helpful links, including tools and equipment I use in all my videos. I really hope that this form of crude swatching is as helpful for you as it is for me because I find myself going through these these swatch pictures again and again as I want to pick what colors to use because seeing things used next to each other in the same lighting at the same time is a really helpful tool to help me decide what I want to use next like ooh this greenish brown has some like pink elements to it ooh, that might work perfectly for this dialogue or color inspiration. So I do have almost all of these crude swatches I've done over the years in one post on my website, chemnitz.com. Beneath each of the swatch photos, I have a text version of the color name so that way you can search and find that color and see it in different situations in relation to other colors. But I would like to do a still crude, but dive like this into other colors. I think ones that excite me a lot would be greens. There is a lot of variety in colors in the green family, um, from yellow greens, blue greens, and even brown greens. Uh, and then it also would be interesting to do the various primaries, our yellows, our reds, and our blues. So which color would you like to see me play with the most? I suppose I technically have done all the browns I have. Uh, well, I have one new one, but otherwise I've done all the browns I have from my muck video uh, that may or may not be out yet, but I um, eventually would like to have done this with all of the acid dyes I have in my collection. So looking at our warmer colors warm, um, I think that you can see some more of the blue in the twilight gray over there, but it is still very purple. And the antique mauve is also more intense than what it was before. I would say otherwise, the rest of them seem pretty true. 
for our bluer purples, and I will try to like reverse the picture since I know this is the other orientation. I would say things look fairly similar to the way they did before. The delphinium blue is more bluer than it was when I first added it on when it looked very, very pink, but time did help it. So maybe the heat isn't as important as the time. And as I said, this deep purple is very much a purple. It is more red than say intense iris, or maybe even, yeah, than the aubergine eggplant color. But I think that uh, some of the comparisons I made before we heated things up on which colors are similar still stands really, really well. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add two tablespoons of white vinegar to each pan, plus eight cups of water. This will lead to some of these colors spreading out. Uh, but I am okay with that. So let's see, the ones that I'm seeing the most spread from right now, uh, what was that purple? So our royal purple is spreading out a lot. I think I used a lot of that dye. And we also saw some spread from jacquard purple. We're seeing some of those pinks move down that way, but a lot of the other colors did seem to be pretty well set already, but I didn't go and press and move things around. Um, now I'm going to turn up the heat and let this heat uh, for 30 minutes before I turn off the heat and let it cool off. Sometimes in these swatching videos I would take this as an opportunity to layer color all over on the yarn, and I'm not going to do that today. I'm going to let this be and conceivably on another day either I might over dye it or if I love it how it is then we'll leave it. But if I'm not satisfied with the color coverage then we can do a you don't love your colorway let's add more dye type video. <laughs> but since some of these colors spread out that is why um, dry it's not going to be the best comparison of the different colors uh, because just if things spread that could influence some of the other hues like the way that this purple oh I see some gorgeous breaking some red spots in there uh, but yeah it's I think that this purple is gonna probably overtake a lot of stuff back to the other pan I already added the two tablespoons of white vinegar and now I'm coming in with our water and the purple pop we're definitely seeing some of those pinks. Look at those pinks spread out. Uh, that is, that color can uh, be really overtake things, but I think that it is really like a fluorescent fuchsia with a little bit of blue in there to make it purple. But what was that pink? The berry crush is also spreading a lot. I see some reds coming out. I think that this was the, yeah, the greener shades amethyst purple. Uh, so again, this is a reason why dry, these might not be the best swatches, but the yarn is still gonna be really, really fun. So again, I'm going to let this heat for 30 minutes, turn off the heat and let things cool completely in the pan. The pinks spread out quite a bit. There is a hint of some pink left in, and oh, I guess I didn't just flip to see. But like, not all the colors penetrate perfectly, but we have some white space left behind, but I am trying to embrace that more negative space a bit now, because a lot of times, I think so much about covering up the white on yarn that maybe I lose some awesome colorways. But we'll take a closer look at this, of course, once it's dry our more blue purple colorway which maybe I'll start off by flipping there's a fair amount of color on the other side it's not going to be a perfect repeating colorway but I think it's still really really pretty and fun so now let's go wash all of this yarn it's now nighttime now that I'm back so that's why the lighting is way more shadowy but which one of these colorways do you like more right now I think well, I really like the way the pink spread on the pink one, but with the more purpley blue one, those are more my colors. That's my jam. So I think that if I was gonna go wild and play with a set of colors, I'd be more likely to pull a bunch from the purple pan. But I wanna hear what you all think, so let me know down in the comments below. Let's wash both of these colors together. I'm only a tiny bit concerned about some back staining from those bright pinks, but we will see. 
Uh, let's add some more water. So far so good, but let's add a little bit of some clear dish soap. And of course, whenever I want things to bleed, there's never any bleeding. When I don't want things to bleed, that's not bad. That's really, really not bad. I see the tiniest hint of pink from the soap, but I think that this is enough that I'm gonna go ahead and rinse this a few times. Then I will put the yarn through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry. But if I do observe more intense bleeding, I will come back and chat about it. There are pluses and minuses to doing this kind of crude swatching cold versus when we're on the stove. When we're on the stove, things, some things might start striking a little faster, so it could be a little easier to see whether certain colors may break. But when we start cold, if things have more time to dissolve and sort of evenly uh, get in that little area, then we might not see breaking in this circumstance where we may see breaking if we were using this on hot yarn. But what we can see are the relative hue differences from these 20 different purple acid dyes that came from three brands, Dharma, Jacquard, and Greener Shades. Do you see that? Rebecca Mommy from Cabinet makes like a thousand different kinds of yarn. <laughs> Thank you, Ryder. Yes, we make a lot of yarn over here. The finished yarn is more balanced than uh, some of these swatches usually are. And by balanced, I mean not every color goes all the way through, but there aren't like huge, huge patches with no color. And as I've mentioned, I really am trying to make an effort to embrace some negative white space on yarn. Don't get me wrong, I love where I keep going and going and layering color over yarn. I have another swatching video coming up, I think with the muck dye, where I did go big and created a more saturated colorway overall. But something about these works, and because each of these skeins were all purples, there isn't a color that stands out and feels like it doesn't fit. If you've been watching Chemnitz for a while, you know that not only do I love purple, but I love to make purple food coloring break into pinks and blues. But one of the things I was most excited about when it came to acid dyes was not only being able to have a true black and gray hue, but also having some purples that might not break. Now, some of these obviously break more than others, but in many of these cases, we do have true purple hues, purplish hues, and so that is a lot of fun. It is worth pointing out, though, that a lot of purples that you might mix out of primaries may break. <laughs> so acid dye purples, some of them break, some don't, and it's really worth playing around with them to figure out which ones will work the way that you want them to. I think I mentioned this already, but besides purple, I think that we might see a lot of diversity if we were to swatch all of the greens in my collection like this. Of course, there would also be some diversity if you do reds, but reds almost can be broken up into pinks and reds. And when it comes to red shades, there are many, many different reds that are extremely similar because they do give a different ultimately a different effect. And so I'm also excited to look at all of those reds, but I don't know if a lot of them would feel necessarily quite as dramatic as what we did here with these purples. But again, let me know which colors you most want to see me group from my entire collection uh, down in the video description. I currently have a complete collection of Jacquard acid dyes, a complete collection of Greener Shades acid dyes, and a nearly complete collection of Dharma acid dyes. There are a few colors that have been discontinued, uh, like Purple Haze and Deep Maroon, that I don't have. Uh, and those colors, I believe, are on like some of my poster swatches. But otherwise, I think I have just about all of them. 
please double check that you're subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. And if you want to help support the channel on another level, go and check out the Chemnitz Patreon. Patrons, thank you so much for your continued support. And I really, really hope that you will enjoy this video. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching. Can I wave goodbye? Um, yeah, fine, here. You can wave goodbye. Bye! <laughs> thank you so much for watching, everyone!